Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. And we're, and we're drinking a gift from patron saint, Patrick Larkin. Larkin. Thank you. This is no, I was about to say. I stumbled I was about on to say, the ending. There's no D. There's, There's no, no D. D. Patrick Larkin, you patron saint of whiskey. All right, what do we got? Whoa, hang on, stabilizing. Okay. That's the first thing to go, your balance. When yeah. You're getting old? Yeah. It's your balance. This is MB Roland, which we've done a few MB Rolands. We've yeah. done a charred one that tastes like smoky bourbon. Yeah. We've done a wheat one, I think. This is just their classic straight bourbon. I dig these guys because they're in Kentucky. Okay. And as far as they say, they were the first grain to glass craft Kentucky distillery. Not a big brand, not a big name. Yeah. Small mom and pop shop. They're actually in... Um, no, hold on. Wouldn't that be like the first... Wait, what's the oldest distillery in Kentucky? Didn't they start really small? Yeah, they're going to say in modern times. First modern times okay. craft, right? All right. In the new resurgence of the craft movement. Sure. And they have been around for a while. I think it was 2009 they first started. Right on. So um, they're in Pembroke. Kentucky, which is actually significantly closer to Nashville than it is to Louisville, mm -hmm. right? About an hour-ish from Nashville. I got like a, like an oaky peanut on that nose. Yeah, these guys are serious about their whiskey. They track every little thing. This is batch 60. Uh, the barrel was a new barrel number four char. Okay. 78% corn, 17 rye, 5 malt. Ringing in at 55.9% alcohol. Oh, wow. It's almost okay. 56. Yeah. Only 565 bottles in this run. Oh man! And then there's a there's a nice corn layer. So it starts for me oaky peanut, and then like this uh, kind of a sweet corn element shows up. Mm-hmm. Ooh, son of a bitch! If I don't really like that bourbon. Wow. I'm not normally a go-to bourbon guy. Is this pot still, or am I getting fooled by the proof? I don't know, but it's rich. It is. So rich. And beautiful. Wow. It doesn't say whether it's pot still or not. That was that was such a, a wow. wave of big flavors all at once. I'm going to have to go back and pick apart what's actually happening. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I'm going to have to... Sl yeah, I agree. I need to slow roll that one. I'm looking to see if we've got another MB Rollin bourbon up there. We do have a full-size bottle of the MB Rollin that someone brought at one point, but I'm, we never reviewed it. You know what's, there's, what? There's... What is I, this? I keep coming back to... There's got to be this, I think it's this buttery corn thread right in the middle of this peanut oakiness. Yeah, I imagine, okay, so I'm going to add to that old dusty antique wood Okay. and peanuts, but like the smell of peanuts in those restaurants we've talked about where you yeah, shell the peanuts and, on the floor. Yeah. So peanut shells, you've torn off the dusty note, right? Yep. And then this perfumey, rich sweetness, and then movie house butter popcorn. Yeah. This so is, many things happening this in this. This is a whiskey nerd whiskey. This is oh, yeah. You sit down and you explore. There's a lot of stuff happening here. I think the proof is probably going to be a bit much for somebody that's not you know, regularly exploring high proof whiskeys. But if you are, really interesting, nice flavors, nicely balanced too, to have that much volume, but also to be able to pick out several different layers, it's nice. Lingering taste is um, the sweetness on beef jerky. On like a candy, like a sweetened beef jerky, like a beef jerky teriyaki sauce or hold something. Hold on, hold on. You're getting, right? crazy. You're getting crazy now. No, no. There's, this, crazy. there's a sweetness at the aftertaste that's meaty instead of just purely candy. It's like a savory sweetness. So I'd put it in the category of like teriyaki, a savory, savory sweetness. Or a wing, you know, like... Going for wings. I see teriyaki to me is so specific of like a, a flavor of sauce. Oh yeah, so I'm, I get I get what you mean by beef jerky savoriness. Yeah, but I'm thinking more like a like just a standard beef jerky. Maybe maybe a little bit of black pepper beef jerky. The teriyaki. Thin with my, well, okay, the so the savoriness me, of the jerky itself. I don't know if it's necessarily. Let me correct. Mean, yeah, I don't actually mean the taste of teriyaki. Okay, I mean the experience of teriyaki. I hate you so much right now. I want to bite your face because 
I get what you mean and I shouldn't. <laughs> I know, but that doesn't make sense, but it's right. real, right? It's not the taste of teriyaki, but it's... <laughs> I think I've just killed us all. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we were recording at really high frame rates, so I could be... <laughs> boom! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, please edit that out. <laughs> no, <laughs> you leave it in. I don't want <laughs> Mr. Hand sanitizer. You gonna sanitize? I forgot where we were because I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> hand sanitizer is back. Ah, <laughs> uh, this hand sanitizer has a smell to it. I hate it. And every time we shoot these videos now, I'm having to overcome mm -hmm. the smell of hand sanitizer on my hands. So I'm, I'm starting to acclimate. Uh enough to those biggest flavors. I think I'm on par with where the, where the proof is and I can start to go in. Oh, if you add a dash of water, it turns into classic dusty bourbon. Mm. This is, it's damn well done. Oh wow, it's lovely. Damn lovely. well done. Yeah, and that, they, I, I get the char too from that oakiness. Yeah. Yeah, that's really nice. Damn. Well done, guys. Damn, Phyllis. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh. from the subreddit XXY guy XX. Does it? Does the order? I'm sorry. It's, just, it's like every gaming you ever picked up, you have to come up with a name. Yeah. They're all taken and you end up putting XXX. X, X. Yeah. That's exactly what happened there. Um, <laughs> sorry. I'm doing yoga stretches. Yeah. I just. Yeah. Let's, uh. Whoa. Oh, you actually reached something above your head. How did it feel? <laughs> oh, can you touch your toes? I can get about two inches away from it, then I have to crack. You want me to try? And I have to crack the knee line. Like move, I can try. Yeah, I'll Give it a shot. That's how much knee bending we're going to get here. Yeah, yeah. Ready? You go. That's pretty good. Oh. That's pretty good. That's about as good as I can do. You all right? Did you pull something? No, I'm good. You stretch a hamstring? <laughs> so good. You want to do a... You warrior pose? <laughs> All right. Does the order in which you finish a whiskey matter? Yes. So here's the thing. I want to try this now. I, I Wait, know this says, is true, so, right? So, so let me no, 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 no. He's not talking about drinking whiskey. Okay. That's what makes this interesting. Oh. Read further. Titles sums it up, but I was reading about Slane's triple cask Irish whiskey in which they used American virgin oak, seasoned casks, and then Spanish sherry casks and the thought popped in my head if you change the order in which you finish that whiskey what would happen interesting right yeah now those guys are blending barrels of whiskey that, that they lived in those barrels right right but so if we had a sherry and a rum cask right. and then a bourbon okay if we moved the bourbon into one into a sherry and one into a rum and then later rum and sherry sure would those two whiskeys, identical bourbons, identical timelines, right. come out differently? I think they would because. Yeah. Just off the top of my head, um, you have to take into account the factor of time. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you did rum first. Right. And then whatever the other cask was second. Right. Then you would have the rum finish, but then that whiskey that experienced the rum finish, it now is getting additional time. That rum finish, you know, those molecules, whatever, is getting more time in the other barrel. So the rum finish character has more time to age as opposed to the other, what was the other barrel? Well, no, no, I think if, if all things being equal, right. it just has to do with the order and that's the only variable. Right. I still think it would change things. I don't know. What, 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 if you start with rum and finish with sherry versus start with the sherry and finish with rum, I think it would be different. Well, I, but, and, and it makes me want to try it so badly. Trish, Trish, Jim, so bad. Trish, Jane, W. I'm good at names. Where exactly does the term light whiskey come from? The name seems odd for something that is generally stronger. It was originally a marketing term, yeah? Yeah, so actually we've talked about this when we reviewed light whiskey, but it's been a while. Light whiskey is defined by a whiskey distilled between 160 and 190 proof, mm -hmm. aged in used or uncharred oak barrels. Am I making it up? They came up with this in the 80s as a way to try and market themselves in the, in the era of clear spirits. You are not making it up. That's exactly what happened. So vodka and gin was taking or taking over the world in the 80s. Yeah. And the whiskey, some of the whiskey brands were like, hey, no, wait for us, guys. We can do that. We're hip and with it. Yeah. And so legally, you can't uh, distill above 160 for bourbon, rye, malt, and things like that. But they said, hey, what if we distilled one higher? It's not vodka. 
It's under 190. Yeah. So it's not vodka, but it's not whiskey traditionally. And thank God, this is where actually I think TTB saved our asses. Yeah. Because TTB could have said, let's broaden the definition of whiskey. Yeah. To include up to 190. Yeah, yeah. Instead, what they said is, let's create a new category called light whiskey. Mm-hmm. Saving oh. those primary categories yeah. and the definitions of the primary categories. So at that level, thank you. Yeah. Uh, but they created a category that is specifically distilled higher, removing some of the longer chain esters and congeners, right. uh, which makes it more pure, which makes it a little less of the big heavy flavor profiles. And then aged in used oak or uncharred oak, which mm-hmm. makes it lighter. And hence they called it light whiskey. And uh, it did not do well at the time. No, it's not the and best. it basically disappeared from the planet. There's been a resurgence in light whiskey recently. Right. Yeah, there's not like everyone's doing it, right. but it's starting to show up as a regular thing in craft distilleries. So more often than not, I think, if I remember correctly, barrel entry proof, mm-hmm. the higher the proof, the more you're going to pull out just sweet flavors. Or wood tannin. Lower proof sweet flavors. Lower proof sweet flavors. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wood so, sugars. So the I mean, light generically. Whiskey, the light whiskey then, this is going to be, is there a barrel entry proof requirement? No? No, it's just a distillation requirement on what you're removing during distillation. Okay. You can proof it down and go low barrel entry proof and yeah. you'd make it even sweeter if you wanted. But, you know, we've had some pretty old light whiskey that tastes... Oh, it's 13 years old was the last Super one. boring. Yeah, 13 Th- years old. And there's old. a reason. Well, we were thinking about, you know, is, is this worth buying? We got a sample and it was like 13 freaking years old and the answer was no. Well, remember not so long ago... It was just a really simple vanilla basic... Yeah. Not long ago, we were looking at tasting some light whiskey, and we decided to put some of our vodka into a five-gallon barrel. Yeah, we're going to see what It's been in there ever since. It's an experiment. We'll see what it turns into. So, um, the wall. Oh, yeah. Here's what I chose. Are you ready? Yeah. I'm not sure about these categories. That's why I'm saying. No, like, I know you're not sure. This was draft one. Because you didn't have me to correct you. It's draft one. Akintoshan 12 in Lowland Scotch. Okay. And Irish Powers John's Lane. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. Right. In Blended Scotch... Black Bull. Mm-hmm. You think blended scotch, Black Bull? I just put, yeah. Not, uh... Not Johnny Walker? Not Johnny Walker. Well, Johnny Walker has... Maybe we'll start... We'll, we'll, do, we'll go shelf to shelf live episode. Now, we'll I have, put for... We'll have candidates. For Isla, I put Log of 116. Of course that then Emma replaced with Lefroy. Yeah. Uh, for Speyside, and this is what I wasn't sure. Yeah. Should Highland Speyside be one category for the purposes of this wall to make room? Right. Or should it be two different categories because I mean, it's got, two different regions? We got room to add at least three more shelves. We can't add to that thing. We would have, Zach would have to disassemble the whole thing. Glue. Space side, I put Cardu 12. But I want it. Which is the base of all of the, a lot Cardu, of the blends. Space side, you went the Cardu? Yeah, side. just as a classic Space side flavor. I don't know. Uh, Highland, I went Glen Morangy, original. Earthy, not quite smoky, not no smoke really. Right. And, but not boring, not okay. only candy. Right. Uh, American malt. Okay. I decided it could be a category, and I put Mirador there. Oh. Uh. It was between Mirador or Westland, and I couldn't decide. Uh, maybe we do like a little bit of a side by side. Maybe we do some blinds. Maybe I'm we just do. Just saying. All right. Uh, Rye, Traverse City, because yeah. we decided that the other day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bourbon. I put rare breed. Quintessential bourbon. I think rare breed. Remember, capable of. No, I know. I understand. I understand. Yeah. I understand. Should we do Kentucky bourbon? Versus any other bourbon? They do in like... We don't have enough... uh, We're starting to add too many categories. You got to simplify this. So, again, the case for the three additional No, 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 no. What we don't need is... Becomes really strong. No, no. What we don't need is even more variables in our lives. We need simplification. What what variables? It's shelves. (laughs) Japanese whiskey. It's shelves in the back of the room. Japanese whiskey. Habiki Harmony. Let me just move it on. (laughs) Japanese whiskey. Habiki. This is going to steamroll over this point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're not you, adding categories. You there's, draw. There's only twelve because twelve is the number of the tribes of Israel. <laughs> this is where you draw the line. Your life is so overwhelmed, so complicated. Yeah. No, that's it. Nope. I'm not adding. Only twelve. Three more shelves. Nope. Not doing it. <laughs> it's already too complicated. It's too many. The shelves. It's too many. It's the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, Japanese whiskey, Harmony Habiki. Okay. 
I, again, we'll have to do some blind tasting. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, Canadian, Forty Creek. And then mm. World Whiskey Cavallon, because which, we which put it in 40 there. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I think I got it. There's a lot. I have my work cut out for me to fix what you have just haphazardly thrown no. into that corner. No. With way too few shelves. You got to start with something, because it's easier to edit well, than that's, to start that's, from scratch. That's why. That's why. I am eager to help you find the right answers. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. <laughs> if you fight me, if I ever friend. You steal me, you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. us.